but we are one third of the way through the MLB season. Crazy. There have been some. It's it is crazy to to realize that, right? They're like I'm not mm-hmm. the only one. Like it's early until all of a sudden it's like we're a third of the way through the season. It's June. So. So we want to talk about some of our biggest surprises and disappointments so far this season. Jay, why don't you go ahead and lead us off with your first? It can be a surprise or it can be a disappointment. I'm fine either way, whichever you want to lead with. All right. I will lead with one of my disappointments. Um, okay. And it's kind of like a surprising disappointment, if that makes sense. But it's that does make sense. the division of the NL Central. You have the Brewers on top of the division, which obviously that makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, it doesn't make sense at all because it shouldn't because be... we're all confused about the moves they were making this offseason. Yeah. Well they're we didn't I'll get back yeah. to that. That's another thing I'll, I'm holding there. But okay. Sorry, you look at ahead. the rest of the division two through five, they're literally a game to two games apart. So this division in the span of a week looking at it right now could look completely different. A series, an interleague series, an interdivision series. This league, this division is flipped on its head in the blink of an eye. In three games, this division is rock. So there's no clear dominator in this division, which is Mm -hmm. interesting because normally someone is pulling a wave at this point in the NL Central, whether it be the Brewers or the Andrew McCutcheon Pirates of old or uh, (laughs) the Cardinals of once upon a time pulled away. So it's like there's no – it feels like no one wants that division. Not but yet right they now, all yeah. want it at the same time. So this so this is actually one of my – one of the things I was looking at. I didn't include it on my list, but it's a valid point because I think you're spot on with this. That The Brewers are the only team above 500 right now. And at this moment, as we're sitting here talking, the Reds are taking it to the Cubs. The the Reds are riding such a high after obviously they were in Colorado. What better place to get confidence than to go to Colorado, right? Oh. But still, like this Reds team is starting to click. And if the Brewers, if the Cubs, if the Cardinals aren't careful, the last place team in the division who's seven games back, give them two weeks, they could be right there with them. Exactly, which is what I'm saying. Ten days, this division is different. Mm-hmm. And especially yeah. if the Reds can get hot in their little league ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> then they're hot in this little league ballpark. And that's a good thing because uh-huh. again, short porches everywhere. The fences are ridiculous. And it's just, it's surprising. I have a buddy who I work with who's a Reds fan and he's like, I give him crap all the time. We were teaching one of our female coworkers about baseball and like explaining it to her. Cause she went to a Mariners game with her husband and was like, well, then you got to check out this park in Cincinnati. I'm like, yeah, the home team that plays there is garbage, but every other team that plays there is like really good, and they hit a lot of home Dude, runs. they're not garbage, though. Like, that's a good team. No, I know. I know. It's just because it's But you're just saying it because your buddy's yeah. a Reds fan. Okay, I see. Yeah. No, there's a really good team. Like, on paper, like, it's a good team. They just haven't been able to put it together yet. They need Joey Votto to rally the troops. I know. You would think, right? But looking at it right now, going into today, they won. They've won four in a row. Today's if they're going to the top of the ninth right now, if they don't blow a four run lead in the ninth, they're gonna. It's gonna be five in a row. So, I think the Reds are legit. I think they're turning things around. I knew they mm-hmm. would figure things out eventually because that team is too good to be this bad. Yeah, far right? too talented. Yeah, and the fact that like I know the Brewers are ten games over five hundred, but they're only a game and a half back in the wild card. Hmm. So. It's crazy though, like you said, this division, the bottom team, a game and a half back in the wild card. This division's bonkers. Yeah, I love it. I I think that's an outstanding one. That's perfect. That's a good one to start with. Um, I'm going to start with a disappoint, disappointment as well. Okay. Uh, that's actually no, it's a surprise. It's kind of a it's kind of a disappointing surprise, but I'm putting it under surprise because I have two different disappointments. So okay. this is one of my surprises, and I'm surprised at how bad overall the NL has been. Yeah. It's weird. There's they only suck. four teams going into Monday. Going into Monday, they're only sorry, what's today? Today's Thursday. <laughs> My week is so messed up. Going into Thursday, there are only four teams over 500. How does that even happen? I don't know, especially when you're only playing other like sub 500 teams. Somebody's got to want to win. 
you got to look at it too. Like <laughs> it's ironic too. It's another thing I was looking at just a random point in here since you brought up the national league, their DHs are outperforming the AL DHs. So when I went and did my all-star voting yesterday for my, for the first round of all-star voting, I'm looking at these DHs and I'm like, Holy crap. The NL has superior DHs to the AL. It is not even close right now. Like the AL literally has Brett Rooker as like the cream of the crop for DH. Everyone mm -hmm. else is trash or has not been great DH wise. Like yeah. you're talking like six. The guy you're paying to hit. Yeah. He's not the, hitting. No, it's like 640 to 710 OPS max. Then Brett Rooker's out here <laughs> posting like an 800 plus OPS. It's ridiculous. The gap. On one of the worst teams in the league. Exactly. But then you go and look at the NL. It's just 750, 800, 900, 750. Like, I'm just like, wow. But look at the DHs that they have across that league, though. Like, Otani, Ozuna. Like, they they went all in on these DHs. Once they got it, they yeah. have not slacked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, it, it is shocking to see that the, that the DH has taken hold the way that it has the National League. But at the same time, though, is it? Because it's like these teams were just jumping at the bit to be like we just want one more hitter just give us one more hitter and we'll go get him yeah and they but, all got him but i was i was thinking about this though like why is the nl so bad and, and I, I don't think this is necessarily the case i think this is just a circumstance of the beginning of the season that things have just happened to work out this way mm -hmm. but my first thought was like did a bunch of teams in the nl were they just like the dodgers are buying themselves a pennant this year like there's no there's no sense in even putting together a winner Right. I mean, I, I don't think that's what's happened, but that was one of the first thoughts I had because the NL West is not super competitive. We talked about the Central competitive in and of itself, but it's really just those bottom four teams right now. There's five games between the Cubs and the Brewers. And then the NL East, like the Braves are whoever. That was right? actually my next disappointment was the, the NL East uh, since you took it to there. It's like there's no competition in the NL East. Like you have the Phillies who are absolutely dominating, which makes sense of how they ended last year coming into this year, the team that they have, the additions they made, the step forward. They brought back all their guys, Wheeler, no, like they, they, they kept their team. They kept their squad together, which is great. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they kept all the pieces together, which was, I mean, obviously, Hey, keep your teams together if you can, that are winners. And well, if maybe, you have a team that's going to get win. you to the NLCS, absolutely yeah. keep them together. No sense yeah. in tearing it down. No, keep it together and add to it, which is what they did, which is why they are absolutely dominating the NL East. But then you have the Braves who, and I, we just was posting in the group chat today. And I was like, dang it. I can't really say too much. Cause I'm going to expose my thoughts to Brad and he's going to know. <laughs> um, and I'm like looking at it and I'm like, yeah, well the Braves are five games back of first, which, the Braves can get hot and go on a run at literally any time, but they are they down. Could. They, they're, they're, they're now down Strider. They're down Strider. But they're man. down Acuna. They're down. Michael Harris looks like a shell of his rookie year. Ozuna's outpacing his entire career right now, which is great to see. He showed it last but year too. It was just overshadowed like because he still though. has, no, he still has that stank on him. He still has a PED right. stank on him. Um, but again, he's producing. He's producing, which is he's like the only one producing. But you know, Austin Riley, he'll turn it around. Uh, Matt Sean Olson. Murphy's got to get healthy, right? Sean Murphy, Matt Olson, uh, Ozzy Albies, Vaughn Grisham. Like they still have dudes. Like they still they have studs. They still have Chris Sale. They have Bryce Elder or no Elders in AAA, but they have dudes. They still they have, have the option for Elder, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they still have all right. these dudes, but it's like there's no competition after that already. That division's Philly Braves, and then everyone else 15 plus behind the Nationals. And that's the way it's been the last couple of years, though. Yeah, I just I wanted right. so much more from this division because like the Marlins could have been a contender, but then they had an early sell. So okay, the Marlins aren't gonna be a contender. The Nationals, I want to see them bring up their young talent and do something with it because why not already at this point? Why not bring up Wood and Elijah Green and Cruz and all these guys you're just yeah, who man. are raking in double A? Just bring them up. Why not? I mean, what's it gonna hurt? It's not gonna hurt them. It's not like you're trying to win. I think I think the way they see it is they don't want to wreck guys when you're when they're not trying to win in a year, right? That like yeah. 
and I, I get it. You bring those if you start the season with those guys next year, then you, you might not be winning anyway either. But at the same time, though, like I think at that what it ready. comes down to is they don't want to waste the service time on a year that means absolutely nothing. That makes you sense. You know, where it's obviously they're not going to catch the Phillies. There's no chance they're going to no. catch the Phillies. But yeah. they're only sitting three and a half back in the wild card. So maybe the, I don't know. I don't know. The Braves it's crazy. Are or it's the Nationals. Weird. The Nats. Yeah. The Braves like, are up five and a half in the wild card right now. Yeah, like that division is like the Phillies, and the rest of the teams are playing for a wild card. But it's like yeah. everyone in the NL is playing for a wild card, which is what the point of the expanded playoffs were, were right. to have everyone playing for the wild card mm-hmm. come this point and beyond in the season. But I don't know. I just wanted more from the Marlins, from the Nationals, from um, – I can't think of the fifth team in that division. The Mets. The Mets. Oh, well, the Not Mets are going to sell the their Mets. entire team here in a month. <laughs> that team's going to have no <laughs> yeah. current that they're starting nine in a month. So, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. So, okay. I'm going to stick with disappointments here for just a minute. I know we're like skewing super negative, but we're going to end positive, is what this will mean. Was what this we're going to end high. But so I'm going to go to the NL West. I almost, I almost went here a minute ago, but I wanted to save it specifically i am super disappointed in the diamondbacks yeah we talked about with the phillies you make the nlcs and you keep it together right add maybe a piece or two here and that's what the diamondbacks did they kept the band together Mm -hmm. they added jordan montgomery they added eduardo rodriguez haven't seen a single pitch from eduardo rodriguez yeah i think Mm -hmm. i texted you as at the game when he got hurt in spring training yeah i think i texted you and like dude this is not good and And they added gino and they added and they brought back um, Gr- Lourdes Guriel. Guriel, yeah, like, yeah, they, they did all the right like, things. They did everything right. I felt like, but it has not panned out to the point that Jordan Montgomery got booed off the mound last night. Mm-hmm. I seen that. Like, it's bad, dude. It's so bad, and it blows my mind. I was so excited to go to Diamondbacks games this year, and I think everybody else in town was too because it's mm-hmm. like, yes, we've got a good team. Yeah, but I think that the team we're seeing now has regressed to the mean because last year I remember talking about them at the beginning of the year and being like, "This team will be fine, right? They're gonna they're gonna ruin some teams' days here and there, but they're gonna be maybe a 500 team." Mm-hmm. Right now they're sitting four games under 500, eight and a half back in the division, which is the Dodgers are gonna run away with, but they're only a game mm-hmm. and a half back in the wild card. So if they get like Corbin Carroll is hitting under 200 right now, yeah, it's the same for the Reds. Like Ellie's hitting under 200 right now. But Ellie's still stealing bags every chance he gets. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So but I don't know, man. I it feels like the Diamondbacks are one or two clicks away from turning it around and running away at the wild card because nobody else seems to super want it right now. And that's what but they at the did same last time, year. Though, if things if these things continue, well, the Diamondbacks also had that super hot start too. Yeah. Was a big thing, which helps. Right, yeah. they rode that for much of the season. Mm-hmm. So because they had a really bad stretch after after the All Star break that it looked like they weren't going to recover from, but then they did in September. And so there's tons of time left, right? We still have two thirds of the season. Uh, What's that? That's over a hundred games. Almost. It's about a hundred games left. Like they got a lot of time, but they just got to just got to turn flip that switch and turn it around. And it's weird that it's been as bad as it has to, like I said, to the point that they're booing their star free agency acquisition off the mount. Mm -hmm. And, so while we're talking about this, though, this is an interesting thing because Jordan Montgomery has a vesting option for next year, right, on his contract. Mm-hmm. If he makes 10 starts, he's guaranteed 25 mil next year. He's made nine starts. And so the, a lot of the talk that I've seen today after what happened last night is like, do the Diamondbacks DFA him because they don't want to guarantee that 25 mil for next year? Oh, kind of like another Madison Bumgarner? Yeah. I mean... But then you know he's going to get picked up by like a Texas or something, and then right. That's the he, thing is that then you've got another team that's going to come in and be like, "Well, we'll pay the." <laughs> they'll pay the minimum, the prorated minimum, and then yeah. he'll make a start, and then the Diamondbacks are still going to be on the hook for that twenty-five million next year. That's true. Wouldn't yeah, that so still be the case? Be worth it, would it? Either way, I they're still. So. I don't think so because I think. It... I think it would have to be a Diamondbacks start. I think it's a ten. I think it's ten starts with the Diamondbacks. So does it, it just get DFA'd every nine starts then, for the rest of the season? No, 
because I don't know that it would necessarily carry over. But the thing is, yeah. though, is he said the same thing that Blake Snell said is that he needed he really needed spring training. That's why he's not yeah. pitching well. Yeah, and which so that I mean, it goes into a whole other conversation that we don't have time for. That like is is Scott Boris on his way out because he's not taking care of his players? I talked about that he, a little bit on the big show this week. He like, has to be because I mean, look at all his guys like dino- Montgomery, Snell, Chapman. All these guys that got late starts and didn't get spring training, just how terrible. Chapman's really starting to turn around. Like I was going to say he's starting to, but it's taken longer than it should have. Way longer. Like the Giants are starting to put some things together, and the Giants look like uh, a Cinderella story in the making right now. They're they starting be, to put yeah. things together. That team's starting to yeah, click. maybe. But. But no, well, and then you've got uh, JD Martinez started the year in Triple A because he didn't get spring training. Like, he didn't, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like Scott Boris has got to be on the way out because Montgomery already moved on from him. I I don't think he's the last guy to do that. No, I think more and more guys because jump shit from the Boris Boris shit. But yep. Okay, All what's right. your next one? Let's move on. All right, let's get something positive going here. My positive, and I knew this day was going to come. I knew this season was bound to happen. I just thought we were a couple of years out still from it at this level. But the Bobby Witt v. Gunnar Henderson MVP discussion, best shortstop in the AL discussion, it's hands down. It's 1A, 1B. There's no, there's no second, there's no, there's no one else in that discussion. It's Bobby Witt Jr. and it's Gunnar Henderson. And then it's every other shortstop in the MLB. We are off the Carlos Correa. We are away from the Xander Bogarts. We are fully away from the Trevor Stories of, a couple of years ago, it is Bobby Witt Jr. and it is Gunnar Henderson, and that's your shortstop position. And this mm-hmm. is an MVP race, and I wish Julio was performing better because he deserves to be like – that's a homer bias thing. But if he was performing at the level that we know he can, he's right mm-hmm. in this discussion with those three for 1A, 1B, 1C. But that's been yep. a big surprise to me this season just to see those two like just – absolutely flourish and starting and which carrying the Royals. Like we could see, we could be seeing another 2015 Royals in the making right now. Thanks to Bobby Witt jr. Just absolutely carrying this team. So that Royals team, man, <clears throat> they, they are surprisingly good. We talked I, about I this. I got to watch them and sp- we've talked about this. We've texted we talked about, about this, this for three years with Brig, with Brig, that they have a lot of talent on that team. And it seems like they've, the bullpen is still an issue. Mm-hmm. It's not that good. Mm-mm. But the offense is to the point now where it doesn't have to be that good. Mm-mm. It just needs to be good enough. Yeah, and, and they've been good enough. Because mm-hmm. like right now, they're 37 and 26. They'd be in first place in the AL West. They'd be in first place in the NL Central. They'd be right by, They're right behind the Dodgers, which is a good place to be. Yeah, and the Guardians are just a really good team this year too. (laughs) I know. Like that's not even that's not even like one of my surprises. (laughs) Like, but I'm pretty sure we talked about this two years ago. When remember that year when the Royals invited like 90 players to spring training? Yeah, like they just had like a ridiculous roster, and I'm pretty sure we talked about it then. Uh, or I talked about it with someone, and I'm like, this this is like a sign of things to come for the Royals. Like, give this a few years. Like, Mm -hmm. this is all their talent they're starting to evaluate now. These are the guys that are going to be making plays here in three years. And here we yeah. are at that three year mark, two, three years later. And it's like, oh, well, this makes total sense um, yeah. that the Royals are here. But no, Gunnar Henderson, Bobby Witt Jr., absolutely. I love it. It's great for baseball. It's great for Bobby Witt, like fulfilling that contract, like from the beginning. And then mm-hmm. Gunnar Henderson just, just saying, hey, hey, Orioles, where's mine? Like, yeah, give me that. Yeah. Give me that Bobby Witt Jr. money. And they Who? they ought to give him one, too, because if they if he continues to perform at this level and just continues to go on and on, it, that dollar amount is just going to go up like Jackson Holiday. Who kind of I, thing? I know that's the weird thing is that we thought it was going to be Jackson Holiday at this point. But, man, it's Gunnar Henderson. Yeah. All the way. We thought Gunnar Henderson was going to take the, the passenger seat while Jackson Holiday took it this year. But no, Gunnar's mm-hmm. like, hold on. Hold on, guys. I am yep. also a number one draft pick and you can hold my beer for a second and exactly st- sit down, Kato, go back to AAA <laughs> and figure it out. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go to a disappointment cause I want to end on a surprise. And I feel like this one hits home for you because you are an Oakland guy deep down, right? The whole debacle 
rooted in Oakland and the relocation. Like, yeah, what in the world? It's unreal the way things have been going. That like, it's like, well, we we got to get out of Oakland. Okay, well, where are we gonna go? Oh shoot, we don't know. We didn't think that far ahead. Okay, let's go to Sacramento. Okay, well now we're gonna go to Vegas. But Vegas is like, well, hold on, like we got to work out some details here. And it's like, oh shoot, we alienated our entire fan base. We have yeah. to go. So let's make sure Vegas happens. But when we get to Vegas, let's play 10% of our home games somewhere else. I saw that today. That I was, this? I was like, <laughs> what? I had to open up the notification three different times because I thought I was seeing things. <laughs> it's the, it's so weird. And I can't, and I can't believe that major league baseball would even let it happen, especially for a team upon relocation. Like you need the gate, sir. I understand it's probably just going to go in Fisher's pocket. But at the same time, though, like I'm here to encourage fans to show up to their home games and do the best you can to help your team get better in that sense. Mm -hmm. Right. But you're taking that away from your home fans. Like if 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 I was a Diamondbacks fan and the Diamondbacks are like, we're going to play 10 percent of our home games, we're going to play 10 home games a year in New Mexico. I'd be like. That is probably a lot fewer games than I'll be going to see you then because I don't really like that. Right? Yeah. Like, there's only 81 like, you, home you games. You do not care about me. You do not care about me as a fan. Yeah, I know they don't only... really care about the fans anyway. No. But at the same time, like... At least not Fisher. Act, act like you do. I don't think Fisher can even do that. I don't think he can either. He has no idea what's going on. That guy is incompetent. So the whole Oakland debacle to me has been a major disappointment. I was really hoping that it was going to be like a nice, smooth thing to be like, Oakland, we love you. Thank you so much. We're going to go to Vegas now. Hopefully there are no ill feelings because we just couldn't get the stadium worked out. Instead, it's like they are breaking every bond they ever had with the really great fan base mm -hmm. that I understand why they don't show up. Yep, and so now this fan base is going out to Rem Remorty Park out in West Oakland and supporting the Oakland Ballers like crazy, selling out nice. game after game after game after game, and Oakland Ballers are loving it. They were able to restore a uh, historical site, historical Negro League Park there in West Oakland, um, literally around the corner from where I grew up. So it's been it's been awesome That's to awesome. see for Oakland, so it's really cool. Um, I guess my other surprise here is just that I didn't think – he was going to ever be the better Contreras brother, but w William Contreras, William. <laughs> William Contreras, MVP candidate, one of the leading MVP candidates in the NL, mind you, is the better Contreras brother. And I would have never guessed that with the contract that Wilson got a couple of years ago from the Cardinals, stepping into the heir apparent for uh, Yachty, like, just it just never it was never supposed to be William who was the better brother I think but here we are he's an MVP candidate ten times better than William Wilson I granted Wilson's hurt with the fractured forearm because he got hit with the bat but but still ultimately I think he is going to be the better of the two yeah which is crazy because we've seen right. Wilson Contreras's career and it's been great yes yep. I love that that's a good one so I'm actually going to go specifically with, with a player as well on my last surprise. That's Brian Wu. This is a homer pick, but man, Brian Wu has been lights out. I got to watch him in spring training, and I can't remember if I texted you after, but I was like, "You did." It was either you or, or yeah. It's like Wu looks really good today, like really, really good. And he he was dealing with some elbow. I think it was elbow inflammation coming out of spring training, so he didn't make his he didn't make the opening day roster. Didn't make mm -hmm. his first start until May. But man, through. Six starts. Well, he's got five, six starts. Six and he's starts. got a 1.07 ERA. Lowest ERA over six starts in Mariners history. I sent you that mm -hmm. right before the show. Yeah. So that's, I, was, I, was, that's, I was looking at it. I was like, oh, you're like, oh crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. It's legit, though. Like, it's so he's good. Legit. because, And it's so funny because last year he struggled with lefties big time. Mm -hmm. But this year he's been so good against he, lefties. Tom, he he looks so confident and calm and just ice. Everything about what he's doing is so much smoother and calmer than it was last year. Last year, he looked mm -hmm. a little bit like he's pitching with his hair on fire. But this year, he – and I think that a lot of that was probably rookie nerves, right? He's of coming course, in yeah. first time and things like that. But but I think that he's settled into his own, figured out what – figured out that he does have good enough stuff. And his – like, I am worried because they, they treat him with kid gloves. 
because they're worried about an injury with him. And I think it's because of his spin rates. They've been treating all of them with kid gloves, though, in Seattle. Gilbert, Kirby, Wu. Gilbert, not as much this year. but Gil- Yo, Yeah, Gilbert's kind of, I mean, Castillo, Kirby, or Castillo, Gilbert have really, haven't really had that effect they, of the kid gloves. Right, but Kirby, Wu, but, Miller, yeah. they've all kind of been very much coddled. A, like hardcore, like and I think seven, what it is six I, innings, seventy pitches. It's like you're done, out of there. I think mostly what it is is they're worried about the big league workload on those guys because they have not gone through a full season. Kirby has, so he Kirby has. Well, they're giving him a longer leash, but like, but Miller and Wu, they're treating those guys as kids gloves, kid gloves because this is going to be their first full mm-hmm. big league season, right? Like yeah. Logan Gilbert has had two full big league seasons already, so he's done the entire workload he is a big leaguer now he is a veteran at this Mm -hmm. point so i think that they're going to continue to treat miller and woo with kid gloves but you can with that bullpen yeah right and the depth and the depth behind them coming back santos is coming back soon it looks like yeah santos is on his way back sostato just came back Mm -hmm. and sauce is sauce is everything this team ever needed yeah personality wise and and a legit lefty out of the pen so good. Please. Him and Spear. We have two legit lefties out of the pin. Him yeah. and Spear, like lights out for the, yeah. ev- anyone. Yep, I love it. But Brian Wu has been my major surprise this year because I saw, like I said, saw him spring training. I loved what I saw out of him, but I was also like, it's spring training and it's the Angels. So, yeah, we know what the <laughs> Angels have been. But anyway, no, I love what I've seen from Wu this year. And and for those of you who don't know, he's the number five starter on the Mariners. Uh, starting rotation. <laughs> the man rotation is so deep. <laughs> At this point, and then we he have, should be a have, Cy Young candidate. <laughs> we have so many more dudes just in the system. Walter Ford, Ashton Izzy, Logan Evans. Like Everson the depth, Hancock. the pitching yeah, depth is just... It's insane. Just need to get we some also, bats. We also have Dallas Keuchel as well. Just saying. That's true. Dallas Keuchel is there. You're right. 